This video shows a simple visual method of understanding the curious actions known as gyroscopic precession or gyroscopic effect. Easily seen with simple gyros, it affects helicopters, planes, can be seen in anti-gravity experiments and probably even the planets. A working gyroscope is basically a spinning flywheel. The spinning force is known as angular momentum and when not interfered with this force is conserved or stored in a single direction in accordance with Newton's laws of motion. If mounted in two sets of pivots or gimbals this line of momentum can be maintained independent of the force of outside movements, hence the gyro compass. Using a simpler cradle, this freedom of movement is lost. The curious reaction we now see is known as gyroscopic precession. This is the movement that can occur when another force acts upon a gyro. It seems illogical unless you view this outside movement as an additional turning force. Remember Newton's law on the conservation of momentum. Well, we now have an additional force to add to the equation. The spinning of the flywheel plus the outside movement acting upon it. Direction of these two forces should combine to conserve the maximum amount of energy. The spinning action of helicopter rotors have, like the gyroscope, angular momentum. If you try to turn a helicopter directly to the right, with rotors turning clockwise, it will unexpectedly climb. This effect can be understood as the two turning forces combining to conserve angular momentum. Turning to the left produces the opposite effect. If you want to know how helicopters actually manoeuvre, there are more detailed explanations on YouTube. Gyroscopic effect can also occur when a gyro is moving around a distant axis. This early 20th century engineering manual gives formula for its action on early aircraft, adding that it was probably the cause of many accidents. The gyroscopic force of these planes is generated by the engine and propeller. The problem of gyroscopic effect occurs when they have to move around in an arc. Although the axis is distant to the gyro, it is still a secondary turning force. Inside and outside edges of the gyro are now travelling in opposite directions relative to the turning arc or orbital direction. The outside edge has greater leverage and therefore this direction has greater momentum. This means the same rule should apply as before. The gyro should turn in the same direction as the secondary force to conserve the maximum amount of momentum. For the propeller and engine to follow the line of this arc, they need to turn through 90 degrees. This creates a tendency for the plane to either climb or dive. Replace the propeller with a gyroscope and this effect is easier to see.
Other seemingly illogical actions explained by this method are the anti-gravity wheel and gyroscopic proportion experiments. These usually consist of a flywheel mounted on a pivoted arm that can be rotated. Spin the wheel up to speed and rotate the arm. If turned the right way, the arm will lift, seemingly defying gravity. Apply the same rule, we notice that the base of the arm is the only pivot allowing the planes of rotation to combine. The lifting force is actually a restricted twisting force, which stops once the flywheel reaches its preferred plane, as we have seen before. The lifting force is generated by the spin of the gyro. As it slows, we can see that the arm has to be turned faster to produce the same effect. Scale this principle up and we have the planets, giant spherical gyroscopes spinning in space, turning in an orbit around the sun, or in this case, a breakfast bowl. Like this globe, Earth spins the same direction as it orbits, but at nearly 23.5 degrees away from its orbital plane. Of the other planets, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn and Neptune all rotate within 30 degrees of their orbital plane. 30 degrees goes into 360 12 times. So, for 6 out of 8 of the planets to follow this 1 in 12 chance would be highly unlikely if we did not take the combined momentum theory into consideration. The planets show features that were not apparent in other demonstrations. Why aren't the planets all perfectly spinning parallel to their orbits? Why is Venus parallel but contra-rotating to its orbit? And why is Uranus, the exception to the rule, rotating at 98 degrees from its orbital plane? Similar to unpowered gyro compasses, the planets are not restricted by pivots and friction. Being more sensitive, they may demonstrate more complications that might otherwise not have been noticed. As previously seen in the anti-gravity demonstration, as the spin or torque of the gyro slows or decreases, so does its reaction to its orbit. With increased friction on one set of pivots, we can see that this reaction stops once the rotational plane is close to its orbit, but continues when moved perpendicularly. This seems to point to leverage playing a major part in realignment. The maximum rotational force, or torque, of a rotating planet is at its equator, shown in green. The further the equator from the orbital plane, shown here by the red arrow, the greater the leverage, and therefore less energy required to realign. If more energy is required to realign the planet's axis the closer it gets to its orbit, then we have an explanation for the compromise seen in the majority of the solar system. The contra-rotation of Venus, parallel to its orbit, can now make sense. It has even been suggested that some of the strange features of this planet might be due to this contradiction of momentum. Uranus's oblique angle of rotation is believed to have been caused by a relatively recent impact. Presently, it maintains its axis like a gyro compass, but it is possible that in the distant future it may settle into a more uniform orientation 
as energy is lost through realignment. If you got this far, thank you for watching.